biggest race in the cycling calendar is now almost upon us. This will be the 103rd edition of the Tour de France. It will all kick off on Saturday the 2nd of July and run through three weeks until Sunday the 24th of July. So we thought we'd come to Bistro Labarique in Bath to tell you all about it. Yeah, it's another excellent opportunity to leave our office and drink wine. Yeah. Now this year's route is 3,519 kilometres, which according to Dan's maths, averages out at about 167 kilometers per day. And interestingly, this year, the race actually goes into four countries, France, of course, but also Spain, Andorra, and also Switzerland. And weirdly, both the rest days take place outside of France. Mm, good coffee for all then. And nice hotels. Now, a quick look at the Tour de France's official website shows that the 21 stages this year are made up of nine flat stages, one hilly day only, uh, nine mountainous stages, including four summit finishes, and then two time trials as well. Yeah, but it all kicks off with one of those flat stages. It's 188 k's from Mont Saint-Michel, which you may remember was the finish of stage 11's time trial in 2013, and then goes to Utah Beach and Saint-Marie-du-Mont. And this is the third time out of four years that the sprinters will actually be fighting it out for the first maillot jaune or yellow jersey of the race. Race director Christian Prudhomme clearly likes riders to fight it out on a road stage as opposed to a prologue. Yeah, he does seem to like the old road stages at the start. Well now, so I think it would be a good time to talk through the sprinters that will be battling it out for that yellow jersey on the very first day. And the favourite on paper is going to be Marcel Cattell. Now he won in Corsica in 2013 and he won in Yorkshire in 2014 and donned the first yellow jersey on both occasions. And he seems to be a rider that likes stages of Grand Tours which take place outside the mainland of that Grand Tour. In fact, seven of his 13 Grand Tour stage wins have been won in this way. That, Dan, is a seriously good fact. Where did you nick that one from? I'd research that myself. <laughs> Didn't research it. Despite the fact though, that stage one takes place on France's mainland this year, it would be a brave person that would bet against mm. him doing it. And he is back to his best this year as well, isn't he? Despite a terrible 2015, a year he is desperately trying to forget, despite the best efforts of the press and us who continue to remind him of it. Yeah, it was a horrific 2015 oh, Marcel, Marcel Cattell, yeah. though, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, trying to deny him that first yellow jersey on this occasion will be his compatriot at Lotto Soudal, and that is Andre Greipel, who won three stages of the Giro d'Italia back in May. And then, of course, there is Mark Cavendish of Dimension Data. Uh, he famously never having worn the yellow jersey in his career, despite all of those multitude of Tour de France stage wins. However, he's never actually beaten Marcel Cattell in a straight-out bunch sprint, and given that his form has not been incredible of late, he pulled out the second stage of the Tour of Slovenia, you have to say it's not going to be an easy victory by any means for the Maxman. No, and of course waiting in the wings we have the likes of Nasser Buani, Arnold Damar, Brian Cockard who's been on great form recently, Peter Sagan, Alexander Kristoff, John Denkold, Michael Matthews. Have I missed anyone? We are particularly excited to see a little outsider, Dylan Gronewegen, yeah. who has already won six races this year for Lotto and El Yumbo, and including getting the better of Andre Greipel recently on Greipel's home turf. Yeah, the random cold, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, it's not all about the sprinters on day one, although mostly. And there'll still be a big fight to get into the early breakaway of the day. And that is because there are actually two categorised climbs that come in the first 25% of the race, with points and offer at the top of both of those. Whoever does best on them will make a trip to the podium at the end of stage one for that polka dot jersey. Now, whoever it is that does win stage one will do very well to keep it on stage two, unless, of course, it's someone like Peter Sagan. Because although stage two is classed as one of the nine flat stages, that doesn't mean we're going to be getting nine sprint finishes. No, it certainly doesn't. So feast your eyes on the profile of the end of that stage. That is gnarly. Ooh, There's gnarly. a third category climb which starts with three kilometres to go. It's 1.9 k's at an average gradient of 6.5%. It flattens off briefly, but it continues for another 700 meter kicker up to the line at an average gradient of 5.7%. That seems tailor-made for the likes of Dan Martin, maybe an Alejandro Valverde, but as you rightly point out, you wouldn't count out Peter Sagan either, or maybe even a Greg Van Avermaet. No. One thing we can be certain of though, is that running to the climb is going to be fast, it's going to be hectic, it's going to be stressful, hmm. and more than a little bit dangerous. Yeah. It probably almost certainly will be actually, won't it? Yeah. Uh, the race from that point starts to head south with a number of long back-to-back -back stages, including a very testing looking stage five. The first proper mountain doesn't come until stage seven, that's the cold Daspan, which features towards the end of that day. But the first really big test for the GC favourites is on stage eight. Over 184 kilometres, they'll pass over a number of mountains, including the Col de Tourmalet. 
which is the most used mountain at the Tour de France. And the final mountain that day will be the Col de Perisord before then descend down into Bagnères du Luchon. Yeah, and then the mountainous fun continues the next day with a summit finish into Andorra before the Tour's first rest day. Now, given that these previous three days will have done a lot to initially shape the Tour de France, now it's probably a good time to actually take a look at the riders who will be doing said shaping. I see what you did there. Uh, well, the favourite at the start, at least on paper, will be Chris Froome of Team Sky. He's won two out of the last three editions of the race. And although 2016 hasn't been his best season so far, he has done, shown very good form recently at the traditional warm-up race for the Tour de France, which is the Criterium de Dauphiné. He won that. Yeah. And then, chief rival is going to be Nairo Quintana, the man who actually ended up finishing second to Chris Froome in both his previous victories. To a certain extent, he's a slight unknown quantity in that he hasn't actually tested himself directly against the other contenders immediately in this build-up to the Tour de France, in that he went to the Route de Sud, a race he admittedly completely crushed and ended up winning. But still, I suppose also you could say that he's not an unknown quantity in that we know any time the road points skywards, he's going to wreak havoc. Yeah, he's but. going to put the frighteners off everybody else. Yeah. And we also, also shouldn't count out, should I say, Alberto Contador. In fact, we can count on him to attack and generally make things as hard as he possibly can for all of his rivals at any given opportunity. Yeah, the other big contenders, BMC's Richie Porte is looking very good. And this will be his first Tour de France as team leader, or at least co-leader, yeah. I suppose, with TJ Van Garderen. Then we've got Thibaut Pinot, who's made big gains this year, hasn't he, particularly against the clock. Then we've got his countryman, Roman Balde, who similarly has made some big improvements. Thank Fabio Aru, possibly, he's not been climbing with the very best in 2016, but we're not going to count him out. No, Dan Martin will be full of confidence as well after his great performance at that Criterium de Dauphiné. And we should also mention a trio of riders who did very well recently at the Tour of Switzerland. Wilco Kelderman, Andrew Talansky and Warren Bargiel. And you can never count out either the Team Katusha leader, which is Joachim Rodriguez. No. And don't forget my man Tom de Moulin. He, oh, may, yeah. he may be going <laughs> completely for the Olympic time trial, but still. That guy's got some class. He's got, some talent. He's got an engine. If he finds himself up there, who knows? Yeah, you're not going to turn down a yellow jersey, are you? Oh, no. It's all right, guys. I'm going to go for the time trial. It's fine. He's not going to turn it down, is he? No, you win at all. Come on, Tom. So let's have a look at the rest of the race. After that first rest day, they will head eastwards towards the Alps on a couple of rolling stages. And the stage profile of Mont Ventoux really stands out, as does, I guess, the uh, mountain in real life. Now, it takes place on July the 14th, and that is Bastille Day. So every French rider, of course, will want to win that stage. But then every other rider will do as well, because it's a very prestigious race to win. Yeah, that was a good point. Now, we actually have to wait until the day after Mont Ventoux before we get our first time trial of this year's race. It's 37.5 kilometres long, mostly rolling, and among the time trial specialists here, we've got the likes of Tony Martin, my man, Tom Demula, Rowan Dennis, Fabian Cancellara. They're all going to be fancying their chances. And then the next time trial is much shorter at just 17 kilometres long on stage 18, but it features 600 metres of wow. ascent, and then is immediately followed by two big mountain stages that are ultimately, if not going to decide, certainly cement the winner of this year's race. Yeah, and it then finishes with its traditional parade up and down the Champs-Élysées in Paris, which will be the last chance for the remaining sprinters in the race to battle it out for that final stage victory. Yeah, I'll tell you what, mate, I'm pretty tired just talking about that. I but am, yeah. I cannot wait for things to kick off. We will, of course, be out there. So if there is anything that you'd like us to take a look at, then please let us know in the comments section below this video. Yeah, and we will be out there in these rather striking t-shirts. Now, if you'd like to purchase one, you haven't got long because they're in limited supplies. Head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com and make sure you get your hands on one. We're actually nearly out. We are, aren't we? We are nearly we might sold be out, out by the time this video comes out. Oh, that's Right, cool. it's time for the point at which all pro riders dread. That didn't make any sense, but you see what I mean. Uh, it's time for the infamous GCN predictions. Mark Cavanagh to take yellow in Harrogate. Simon Gerrans will win stage two and take the yellow dirt with it. Vincenzo Nibli is not going to make it. Hody, 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 hody. To be fair, GCN presenters dread it. There's a twist to this one. Not only are we going to try and predict the overall winner, but also the winner of stage one. The first yellow jersey. So we are now jinxing, cursing, sprinters as well as double the riders that we normally would do. Yeah, oh, sorry. And I've got double the things to get really horrifically wrong. Okay, we'll start with you, Si. Stage one. Stage one winner will be Marcel Kittel. 
Whoa. Yeah. And oh, GC surprise. I think I'm going for, I'm going for the outsiders. The Tour de France will be won by Chris Froome. Oh. Living on the edge. Yeah, well you can't say it. Uh, it'd be an idiot who bets against Marcel Cattell and then not bet against him. So anyway, go on mate, how about you? Well I'm about to bet against Marcel Cattell. Stage one will be a sprint finish won by Dylan Grunewagen. Ooh, nice. Also NL Yumbo, young rider, very, very fast. And the overall GC will be won by Nairo Quintana. I think this is the year for him. To right. be fair, you might be right. We should hand over to Matt and Lasty, who have made their predictions. They're not going else. to escape lightly. Oh, no. no. Okay, Matt, who is your GC tip? The overall, Alberto Contador. Oh, interesting. And mm. what about stage one? Stage one prediction, Marcel Kittel of Etix Quickstep. Okay, then, Lasty, who is your tip for stage one? Stage one is going to be won by Thomas Fockler with a heroic last minute attack. No way. In that case, who's going to be your GC rider? TJ Van Garderen is going to win the overall. What? <laughs> Can't believe that. Seriously. Yeah. I really do hope the curse of GCN does finally lift in time for this year's race. I doubt it. Me too. Well, anyway, that is all you need to know about the 2016 Tour de France. There's plenty more to know, but that is all we know. You Sorry, know yeah. we know. Exactly. Now, there is still a while to wait until the race, so if you want to catch up on 2015 Tour de France content, we have loads on the channel for you. And if you click just up there, you get through to a playlist with all of it in one handy spot. Yeah, and just down here are five sprint tips from the man, that is Mark Cavendish, presumably who will be watching that video himself before stage one. Absolutely, and then make sure you subscribe to GCN as well, it's completely free, and you are then in the exact right spot for all our 2016 Tour de France content. Just click on the globe.